What's up guys, it's Christmas or happy holidays, whatever you happen to be celebrating or if you don't celebrate it at all, happy YouTube day. So you got yourself Battlefield 1 and for many of you it's your first Battlefield game. You start it up, you're going to skip the single player of course because you're a badass, you don't need that single player, you're going right into the multiplayer, you're going to kick some ass. Does that sound familiar? You play a few rounds and you find that you might have jumped the gun, there's a little bit of learning curve and you find yourself getting your ass kicked. Or maybe... Uh, you're the type like me that usually tries to do a little bit of research and preliminary analysis before you jump in because you don't want to you don't want to get frustrated when you start off badly does that sound familiar that's what this video is for what I'll do is of course give you the Christmas noobs guide to battlefield one it won't include everything imaginable otherwise we'll be here for several hours but what I'll do is I'll give you the basic tips and tricks to give you a good foundation and starting point when playing this game. I'm going to break down the four classes, strengths, and weaknesses, and I'm going to give you general tips and tricks. And I'll start with the general ones, because these ones are going to really help you out, and you can implement, you can implement them immediately the second you turn, on, you turn on the game. So, and of course what I'll do is in the end screen, I'm going to give you links to tutorial videos. So if you want to see something broken down and get the idiosyncrasies of it down so you can really master it, those will be full-length videos and you can have a look at those anytime you want at your own discretion that's at the end of the video let's start let's not waste any more time let's get into the general tips first and these are the ones that you can implement now basically the first thing of note of course battlefield is a more team-based game than many other fps games you played unless of course you've come from counter-strike or overwatch where it's similar so if you're new though i'll assume you started new no matter how new you are or if you've owned all battlefield games in existence Communicating with squad mates and running with a team for a numbers advantage is going to give you far better results in every aspect of the game, bar none, full stop. That's kill-death ratio, score, wins, the works. The thing is too, you can lone wolf and not talk to others in this game, and I get it. Some people are horribly immature and you don't want to talk to them. Or maybe you're someone that just has a touch of social anxiety and the last thing you want to do is talk to strangers. That's fine too. The thing is, if you stick with your squad, and usually it's four to five, it's a list of four to five player gamer tag names in sort of the bottom leftish corner. That's your squad. They'll be green. You can also stick with your teammates. They're not in your squad, but they'll be blue. You can stick with them and follow them around attacking objectives. Basically, if you're with a squad or you're with a different... It's common sense. If you have a numbers advantage, you're going to see more success most of the time. The other one, too, assuming you're new to Battlefield 1, get familiar with a mechanic in Battlefield called spotting. On PC, this is hitting the Q key. You basically point at something and click Q. And on PS4, it's clicking R1. And on Xbox, it's clicking the right bumper. What this does is highlight the enemy on the minimap and also puts an icon over his head. The icon displays the class that the character is playing. So say, for example, you're a sniper and you spot the enemy and all of a sudden you see the fire emblem, which is assault. All of a sudden, you know... You have an advantage at range, of course, because you're a sniper, and because Assault is more geared for close quarters. And that's not only great information for you to diagnose and acknowledge how you're going to fight him, the rest of your team knows this information too, because he's on the map for a bit, it's an estimated 5 seconds, give or take, correct me if I'm wrong on that, but it's a pretty good estimation. If he's on the map, for mini map, and has that icon over his head for 5 seconds, you know how to engage him now. You know his strengths and weaknesses. So spotting is pivotal, it helps you and the team out so much. Take advantage of it. Uh, the other thing too, you can spot vehicles and it will die, it will basically put it on the map, the mini-map for you. Spot all infantry for that same thing. And if you're a squad leader, and of course the five names at the bottom of the screen, if you're on the top, you're the squad leader. What happens is if you're the squad leader, if you uh, point at, say, a conquest flag and spot it, it'll sort of have a green flash go around it. What that means is it is, the, it, it is now designated, which means that if you and your team capture that point, or if you designate an area to defend that point, you get extra points. Extra points means faster leveling, better weapons, you're off to the races. General common sense, I don't know anyone who would refuse more extra points. <laughs> and general rule I like to use for spotting is this, because I hear a lot of people emphasize spot all the time, every time, and I mean, that's what I'm encouraging, right? I don't want to counter contradict myself, but general rule, I, yeah, general rule I like to use is this. If you believe you have a great shot at getting the kill, and you have, like, say, an advantage and you get behind enemy lines, shoot to kill the other but if you're not sure you can get the kill maybe you're slightly out of range maybe he's detected you're there and you or you know for sure you can't get the kill spot him so if 
If you're in close range and, and you can just immediately pull up your weapon and shoot the guy, just shoot him. There's no point in spotting and then shooting, you're wasting time. Somebody else might have seen you while you're aiming at him and he'll kill you and nothing happens. So, get the kill. And uh, if you're not sure or you know you can't, spot everything. That's what I like to use. It's gotten me good success. In terms of classes, and I'll break this down further more in a minute, but play the role that's needed. All four of them have a specific role. So if you want to keep people alive, play as Medic. If you want to destroy vehicles, play as Assault. And if you want to designate everyone and sort of uh, keep sort of an intermediate area between you while killing things and spotting everything, play as uh, Scout. And we'll get into this more in a second. FPS 101, but I'm going to mention it anyway. Make sure you use Cover. Cover is pretty much nearly everywhere, uh, and that can come from elevation changes to holes from shell, expo cell shell explosions <laughs> in the ground, and of course buildings and fences, etc. The less you expose to the enemy, the harder you're going to be to hit, the better a chance you are at survival, basically. Move from one area of cover to another and do so without hesitation. I've seen multiple people, uh, when moving from one area of cover to another, they sort of stop. Don't do that. Make sure you check where you're going to be going is clear and then go without hesitation. And when you're going, uh, unless you want to get there as quick as possible, like say you know that a straight line, straight line of course is the quickest way to get somewhere, but say you know, say you aren't sure or you know that there's an enemy that will be shooting at you when you're going from cover to cover, be unpredictable. Sort of zigzag, vary up your timing. If you're going in a straight line over a long route, though, you're easy bait for snipers. Like, I'd have fun shooting at you if you're going in a straight line. Quite easy that way to kill you. The other thing, too, it sounds a bit contradictory, but when you're open, use sprint to get to cover. Uh, when you're moving in close quarters environments, especially when moving around corners, you want to limit your sprinting because this will cause slower weapon draw times and aiming speeds, and if someone's already aiming at you with their weapon drawn around the corner, that's it for you. You're done. So you sort of want to, going back with the previous two, you sort of want to be very aware of what you're doing before you make the action. And then once you actually make the action, don't hesitate. If you need to cross very large areas, you'll definitely want to sprint. But at the same time, you'll want to vary up uh, how you get to that area. Basically, just be unpredictable and the enemy will have a harder time predicting what you're doing. The other thing of note too, Battlefield 1 has elite class icons, and you should definitely prioritize killing them. If they're well supported, they could decimate your whole team. So if you're solo, try and get behind them for a melee kill, and K-Bullets from the Scout class work well to whittle down their health. What you should know too, the Medic and, and Support can definitely throw down ammo and health packs at will. And you can destroy them as well. So if you see one brought down by the, or put down by the enemy, you can shoot and destroy it. And that really will help you out with regard to uh, preventing them from regenerating health and such. And because you have a limitless supply of them, toss them everywhere. There'll be times where I'll go 30 seconds after I toss down some ammo and all of a sudden it'll pop on the screen that I've resupplied teammates. You never know. Just throw them. You get a limitless supply of them. As stated previously, if you want to win more and level up faster, play the objective. If you're playing Conquest, capture the flags, you get tons of points. If you're playing Rust, try and get to the MCOM or lock down an area and defend it. You'll get more points, which will mean better unlocks, which means better progression, which means better overall gameplay for you. For the love of God too, lose, uh, use your minimap. And it highlights everything from teammates, enemies, map layout, vehicles, objective. It's one of the most powerful, powerful tools in the game and using it often will make you better by leaps and bounds. Next two, I know it's tough, but there's this sort of gaming culture think that uh, of kill-death ratio, and I don't know when it started, maybe it's always been around, but don't let it get to you. And I get it, you, don't, you also want to balance it out though, you don't want to die needless deaths and say, oh, well, you know, who cares, it's kill-death ratio. You want to you want to balance. You want to play strategic, you want to play intelligent, and of course you want to do well and you want it to reflect in your stats. But at the same time, don't let it hinder you to the point where you aren't doing anything. If you if you start thinking of, thinking of kill-death ratio as your only priority, you end up becoming way too passive, and ironically enough, it ends up becoming a self-fulfilling prophecy. To protect your kill-death ratio, you usually end up doing significantly worse than if you had just played aggressive. So balance it out. Play smart and play aggressive when needed. 
One thing of note too, you should probably already know, learn the maps. Basic tip, but I think it goes without saying. Know where choke, choke points are, know where you expect the enemy will be most of the time, and it gives you a pretty idea, a pretty good idea of where you think the enemy will be and where you should probably be as a response. It's uh, it's just great information and it's great. It's a great um, just general uh, process you should get into all the time. Know the high traffic and hot spots of all the maps. If you're the squad leader and you'll know it because, like I said, you'll be at the top of the squad list. Aim at something and spot it. It's designated extra points and lots of people like to follow around follow you around they like a general leader take advantage of that if you're starting new first thing i'd probably suggest to you of course is a sensitivity that works if you've played many other fps games before try and emulate that same sensitivity to lessen the learning curve um, and basically how it goes is this if you find that uh, an enemy moving at full speed you have a hard time keeping up with the crosshair raise your sensitivity a bit Lower it if you find that you keep overshooting or in in those minute adjustments you need for like precision. You can't seem to get it perfect. Lower your sensitivity a little bit. So let's get to the classes. In Battlefield 4, you have four classes to choose from. You have an additional two of pilot and tank class, but the thing is you have to spawn in the vehicles to actually use them. But the other four are available at all times. So let's get into them. They all have strengths and weaknesses. First things first is assault. The Assault class is your primary anti-vehicle class. Everything associated with it allows you to just absolute wreak havoc, destroy buildings, destroy vehicles, etc. And that should be your number one priority with this class in vehicle maps is to destroy vehicles. The weapons associated with the class are SMGs and shotguns that really emphasize close quarters engagements, so that's where you need to stay to take full advantage of the class's ranges in terms of the weapons. It's definitely a front lines class. If you're at mid range and hanging back from the main pack, you're probably not going to be doing your team all that well. You do have AT rockets that are good at range, and if you get to scout rank 10, you get the Hell Regal, which is of course better at longer range. But uh, if, if it's in a vehicle map where your design is to try and take out vehicles, playing at mid range and longer range, you're not going to be doing anyone any good really. So try to use that. AT rockets are best used from afar, but of course you have to be bipodded to use them. Dynamite and anti-tank grenades will keep you mobile and in close range, but of course the trade-off being it's more dangerous to get in close to use these weapons. So AT mines of course are the last ones. They can be set and forgotten, so try and put them in popular areas or, pro or well, popular general areas that you think vehicles will go and maybe you get yourself a kill out of it. Next, Medic. Medic is exactly as it, as it suggests. Uh, your job is to heal and revive teammates as well as keep yourself from dying. The weapons are best suited for medium and maybe slightly longer range encounters depending on your skill. So you can out snipe snipers at range and, and even a really good player in close quarters engagements can get away with hip firing. But close quarters is probably not the engagement range you should probably be going for at all times, especially if you're new. And longer range, you are sniper bait, especially if you, because it's going to take at least three shots to kill. So be wary of that at longer range. Medium range is going to be your best bet for success. Medics have utility in all maps and situations, which is why I'd probably recommend if you're a rookie to start with the medic class first. Good medics, well, basically win matches. It's the one class where staying alive instead of being a full-time slayer would actually benefit the team a lot more. Though, of course, I'm not saying don't go and kill anyone. <laughs> Toss medic bags and medic crates whenever you get the chance. They're free, they don't cost you anything, and you get a limitless supply of them to help heal yourself and your team. Toss them, like I said, even if you haven't taken damage, but you may expect encounters coming up soon. And, of course, to revive, use the, the syringe and hold it till it retracts completely with medicine and then inject the player that's dead. If you see a teammate on the ground, it's the skull icon, try and revive him. If his icon begins flashing, it means he's heading back to the, the class selection screen, and if he's right in the middle of the open, you should probably just use discretion and think, okay, well, if he's going back to the main screen, I'm not going to go all the way out there to get myself killed for nothing. So just, it's a general tip for that. Based on that too, here's another one. Only revive teammates if it's safe to do so. I've seen lots of people complain about not being revived in the chat. They're like, why didn't you revive me, bro? But the thing is, uh, 
you'll run out to stop them complaining and get gunned down as well, and now two of you are dead. So it, tr if the area isn't clear, try and clear it before you revive the guy. There's a long time before he can actually leave the, ma the screen before it forces him out, so he can wait there a few more seconds before you clear the area. If you feel you can't clear the area, just let him respawn back on you again and go from there. There's no sense in two of you getting killed. Next, the support class. It's best designed for longer range when bipoded and sort of close to medium range encounters based on the weapons. It's probably the most versatile if you're skilled and you take full advantage of the bipod in terms of ranges. They have large magazine size which help provide suppressive fire and with Battlefield 1's suppression mechanic which allows the, uh, the enemy screen to blur up and makes your counter fire inaccurate, it's something to take advantage of. Suppression is best used for opening flank lanes and relocating or for spraying down loops of or groups of large enemies that are unsuspecting. The equipment has a lot of variety as well. The ammo box uh, helps resupply yourself and your teammates, so I'd highly advise spamming it. And limpid charge helps take out vehicles, take out building walls to try and rush in. And the crossbow gives you a longer range explosive option, and you get a wrench which helps you repair vehicles for your for your teammates as well. So the, it's very versatile class. Your job for support, because of that versatility, is sort of almost endless. You can destroy everything, you can help your team destroy everything, you can uh, build your teammates' vehicles back up, you can attack from afar, you can attack in close, you can resupply them. It's There's a lot of, a lot of versatility to this class, and you can play it as such. And last but not least, the always controversial Scout class. It's best designed for medium to longer range encounters, though aggressive players and more skilled players, uh, not so much when you're new, but as you get more aggressive, you can start playing it in really close ranges as well. I have a tutorial for that if you want to see that as well. The equipment you, uh, you can use basically emphasizes spotting and highlighting enemies. So the trench periscope allows you to view things down range. It gives you a range finder and you can spot and designate people. It's nice to have. And of course the spotting flare is one I think it's mandatory, all scouts should have it. It allows you to basically shoot a flare into enemy lines and for a short while it's going to designate everything in a sort of an estimate of 15 to 20 meter radius around that flare. It's amazing, it really helps your team take full advantage of it. And the scout class is one where you should really take advantage of the equipment available to the class. You, and of course you should do it for all classes, but this one especially so. I see lots of snipers never using the flare and I'm like, oh man, how do you not use the flare? It helps everyone and you so much, just use it. So take full advantage of the equipment with this class especially. The other thing of note too, even if you're not playing aggressive, you should probably stay mobile with the scout class because more than likely it's going to give you better results than sitting in one spot. You don't even have to move far after you take a shot or get a kill, but I guarantee you sitting in the, sta the same spot will get you hunted down by not only the guy that you killed, but more than likely someone's going to hear your gunshot and hunt you down for sure. And believe me, a lot of YouTube absolutely hate sniper as, snipers as is, and they're probably looking for a reason to put you on YouTube. So play intelligent and then put them on YouTube. That's what I'd suggest you to do. Of note too, the sniper variants, when you pick a weapon, they have scope glare. Marksman and infantry variants don't, so you can use this to your advantage if, say, you want to play a closer range, medium range encounter. You probably want the marksman as opposed to the sniper because that way you won't give off a glint. And that's it for the classes. Basically, you want to take full advantage of the equipment at your disposal. You want to stay in the ranges I suggested and incorporate the general tips associated with them. This is, of course, a lot of information to get you started, but don't feel overwhelmed. There's actually a lot more to know. Um, the more information you get, the better. But most of all, this is a game. Have fun with it. I know, for me, my idea of fun is really doing good every match, so that's why I like sharing certain specific information that if you're that type, it'll help you out as well. So, take full advantage of it. Uh, just, But most of all, it's a game. Have fun. Don't take it so serious. For the love of God, YouTube. Just don't take it so serious. Uh, if you want more in-depth videos covering uh, aspects of sniping, tanking, and even brief tips and tricks toward the game, I have lots of different playlists, and I'm going to record, and you'll probably hear it over the screen right now as I'm talking about it. So stay tuned to those. 
If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like, share it around to anyone you feel or a community group that you feel would actually enjoy the video, uh, and subscribe if you'd like to see more. Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays, hope you enjoyed, see you later guys and gals.